Museum Art Gallery works examined through the positions of Sontag and Berger. Two pieces of artwork from the thyssen bornemisza National Museum in Madrid will be discussed in relation to the philosophies of John Berger and Susan Sontag. Chapter 5 of Ways of Seeing posits that oil paintings emphasize materialism, flaunt the benefits afforded by wealth, and demonstrate the visual desirability of what can be bought. Berger. This medium is distinguished by its special ability to render the tangibility, the texture, the luster, the solidity of what it depicts. Therefore, it denotes possession as if the physical object or subject matter is immediately at hand. Berger. The essay on photography argues that the person holding the camera is a non-participant in the surrounding activities. Sontag. Catching a moment on film aims to certify an experience, which is ironically reduced by a concerted effort to search for the photogenic. Sontag. The happy violinist oil painting reveals a man gazing gleefully at a partially filled wine glass being held up in his right hand while he carries a violin under his left arm. Atop his head is a muffin cap plumed with red, white, and blue feathers. He wears a theatrical costume that is shifted to one side, exposing his left shoulder. Superb attention to detail with lighting is characteristic of the artist, Gerrit van Honthorst, Wikipedia. The wine glass has conspicuous nubs on the base that can seemingly be palpated, and its translucency adds three-dimensional shape. Illumination and shadowing, particularly on the man's skin, further enhance the realism. Reddish tones on his face and fingers offer a flash of warmth through perceived temperature fluctuation, and perhaps a wave of euphoria due to the reimagined stimulus of intoxication. Myriad oil paintings fixate on objects, and both the violin and wine glass follow in this trend. However, Berger's notion of personifying the coveted can be expanded further, embodied in the expression conveyed by the man. Here is a constant reminder of that which is jovial, uplifting, spirited, pleasurable, exuberant, prosperous, celebratory, and a host of other sensations associated with merriment and good fortune. Raising your glass in a toast or having fun at a party are enjoyable facets of life. The happy violinist brings those feelings into the present. Objects of showmanship, the violin and wine glass, validate considerable means from a monetary standpoint. However, the elevated mood and triumphant demeanor of the man translate over to similarly portray the owner as a thriving individual. This photograph by Eugène Atget captures a field in which children of various ages are playing outside while being supervised by an adult, presumed to be their nanny. The group in the foreground is comprised mostly of girls, with one boy attempting to sneak off unnoticed. The youngest child struggles to figure out something in her hand, possibly a new toy she is trying to master. Three of the older girls are crouched low without sitting, as if to avoid getting their dresses dirty, while they either play a game or trace designs onto the ground. The fourth older girl standing near them, perhaps taking a break or moving to the other side of the rotation as if playing musical chairs. The nanny towers above them all, staring off into the distance with a vacant look in her eye. Children playing Luxembourg Gardens is set in Paris, where trees line the perimeter of this park, and a statue is mounted on a pedestal in one corner of the clearing. Further back in the center, a walkway disappears into the distance. The backdrop shares a sentiment of leisurely tranquility, a pleasant outing devoid of lessons and chores. It is unclear how often the children get the opportunity to enjoy such excursions away from home, beyond the hustle and bustle of storefronts or crowded streets or mainstream society in general. Eugène Atget is best known for methodically recording the historical layout, venues, and environment of Paris before many of its buildings were demolished. Wikipedia. It is assumed that he has no special relationship to the people or location being pictured here. Susan Sontag's assertion that the photographer is relegated to a spectator role rather than actively partaking in the scene being preserved is probably geared more toward personal rather than commercial photography. Besides a recent fascination with selfies and in times past utilizing the timer delay function of a camera, the person behind the lens is by definition separated from that which is in front of the lens. Even when one's own face or body is inserted into the frame, one's mind concentrates on catching the most ideal glimpse of the occasion for perpetuity. We are left to fantasize about encounters that we neglected to focus on during the time they were happening. We invent our own version of a story to convince ourselves and others that it was a worthwhile endeavor. The camera lens, therefore, does not minister to our private delight, but instead serves to prove the value of that which we proudly put on display for the rest of the world. The crossover of the two themes between Berger and Sontag is surprisingly the notion of wanting to impress others. 
apparently posting pictures has been effective in accomplishing this goal for centuries, despite evolution of the channels to do so. Possession and experience are trumped by self-proclaimed prestige and glamour. A feigned declaration becomes preferable to a potential reality of the mediocre, average, ordinary, or ultimately anonymous 